together to, to take out if you raise a voice. You are being sure that you're not. Don't even just keep speaking to our people. Keep speaking. Don't worry about it. I just want to say that it's so, so disheartening to see this. But this is something that we face every day. As an indigenous woman, I come across these kind of people every day. That's right. Every day. This is nothing new to me. Nothing. Nothing new to me. So I want to say to you that are here today, I want to acknowledge this. Uh, the Songhese people, the Squamil people who are here for thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Thousands of years. And it's so important for us to know that uh, Columbus sailed the ocean blue in which year? Which year? 1492 or some shit? 1492. Columbus sailed the ocean blue. On this side, when did Columbus, or not Columbus came, but other people came. Yep. The Spanish came on this side. Yep. I'm from a matriarchal community. I'm from the Oneida Nation, Wolf Clan. Welcome. My name is Gahandut. Means carrier. <laughs> End of the field. And so one of the things that we, that we do in a matriarchal community, my community especially, Six Nations, Haudenosaunee people, I've been transplanted over here, and I've been on this territory in Vancouver since the early 80s. And it's so important to remember that our people have taken care of these lands for thousands of years. That's right. That we didn't need a basic income then. We had all That's right. the, the glory, all the resources that we needed were here. They say when the tide was out, the table was set. Food was ready. Food was ready for people. Thank you, sister. Our people have uh, been deprived, been restricted. Colonization has happened to our people. We place this on tiny reserves. Can I get my water? Do we have water, please? Place on tiny reserves, and uh, we had to get a, a permit to leave the reserve. Oh, shame. Can you imagine that? And some of the reserves, the territory we're free to roam. North America, Turtle Island. There were no borders. That's right. My mother tells me, reminders me to know who I come from, where I come from, and I teach that to my daughter as well. Who you are and where you come from is so very important. And that we come from a matriarchal community. And when patriot, patriarchy and when colonization took over, that's the first thing they attacked was the women. That's right. The women were attacked. It's been a gendered oppression, and a gendered oppression that's happened. And our women have suffered the most from it. Take a we break. See that today. And Take some sips. And, it, and it's happening. Yeah. Thank you, sister. Feel your toes. Take a breath. You're doing awesome. You're really loud in the mic. It's awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. So I just want to say how important it is to educate ourselves. To educate ourselves because so many of our, so many Canadians are uneducated. And it's not your fault. That's it's right. It's not your fault. There's so much hidden, hidden truth. There is no truth in reconciliation because the truth hasn't been told yet. That's right. The truth has not been told yet. The truth needs to be told. That's What's right. happened to my people is a shame and it's a crime. And it was and it's been noted. It's been noted over and over and over and over again. And people are ignoring it. People are ignoring it and hijacking, sidetracking things like this fellow over here. Ignorance. So we have to stand together. That's right. This basic income would provide some support for all people, all people, all women who need that. My people are face a lot of discrimination and racism, even trying to hold a job down. So we have an American fascist over here. Being in a room with people who might of course, be if they were indigenous, they would have been beaten up by now. And racist to you, and, and uh, different remarks happening. So we need to educate ourselves, we need to educate our neighbors to the true history to the true history of this land. That's right. Where this land is. And you know my children, they don't, you don't learn it in, in the education system that we have now. And my children, I was able to get them both through to post-secondary school, which is a very difficult task for our people to do. Because there's so much racism and discrimination in the school system. And so much discrimination and racism That's in the right. healthcare system, in the justice system. And, all, and it goes all throughout all the system but it's so important to to acknowledge the first nations people 
as our friends, as our neighbors, as our colleagues. And I wanted to, to mention about September 30th, and we see all the shoes that are, that are lined here and how it's so important. You know, for me, I felt very, uh, I felt it was a, a bit of a, um, a slap in the face when the government issued uh, a day, uh, a holiday for Canadians for September 30th for truth and reconciliation. Well, we know, we know it. there's no truth. And the Canadians are, are, are blinded. You're blinded. You're kept blinded. And it's purposefully done. Purposefully done. So that you, so that you don't know the truth. And you don't realize who the title holders are of this land. And you don't realize how much oppression our people have faced. And how, how we need to, to support First Nations people, especially and to learn more about them from where you come from, whose land you're on, whose territory you come from. Thanks for staying loud. September 30th is an important day for, for all residential school survivors and all of our people. And I was thinking that, you know, it would be a good thing if the Canadians mainstream could donate a day's pay because you're going to get a holiday on September 30th. So I thought, what could they do? They could donate a day's pay, that day's pay. Donate that day's pay to an indigenous organization, to an, a First Nations community. Awesome idea. Our organizations are overworked and, and underfunded. That's Extremely. right. I'm with the Pacific Association of First Nations Women. We've been in existence since 1980. We celebrated our 40th year this year. We're a provincial, provincial organization. I've been working with the association, so honored to work with them uh, for four years now. And so proud that we have a lot of programs and services going on. But I'll tell you, it's very tri tiring and trying because we don't have core funding. We don't have core funding for Indigenous women's organizations. And that's one of the Shame. calls for justice as well, too. That we need core funding. And our funding right. has been cut for health, through our, through our Vancouver Coastal House. So it's really important that we support indigenous run and managed organizations. That's right. My organization is called the Pacific Association of First Nations Women. Awesome. We changed our name the time the AFN changed their name. I was on the board of directors at that time. The AFN, we wanted to be AFN with a W. So we said we're going to be Pacific AFNW. <laughs> Typical white so that's man. That's how people can remember our, our name, P A F N W. Uh, we're on Facebook. 